God doesn't want me worrying about anything. Nothing, nada, zip, zero. Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. That's pretty clear. Instead, pray about everything. We've talked about this many times. You can pray or you can panic. If you're not praying, you're panicking. You can worry or you can worship. If you're not worshiping, you're worrying. You invite worship in the front door, worry goes out the back door. And so God says, I don't want you worrying about anything. Now why? He says, worry is unreasonable. It's unreasonable. In other words, it doesn't make sense. It's illogical. It is irrational. It is unreasonable. Uh, in the first place, we typically worry about the wrong thing. We worry about the little stuff. How I look, how I appear, what I say, who, I, who I'm talking to. Stuff, am I going to be late for this meeting? Stuff that isn't going to matter in five years. It's all temporary. If you're really going to worry, and God says you shouldn't, but if you are going to worry, worry about things that are eternal. Don't worry about stuff that's not going to matter tomorrow. Jesus says you should never worry, not only because it's unreasonable, it's unnatural. Nature does not worry. It's unnatural. Jesus says, you know, look at the birds. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns. They're not worried about, you know, do I have enough to live on? And he said, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than birds? If God takes care of birds, isn't he going to take care of you? And then he says in verse 28 and 29, Matthew 6, why do you worry about your clothes? Well, you go out and look at the flowers. Look at the field lilies. They don't worry about, about how they look. Yet King Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed as beautifully as they are. And he said, all of creation trusts my care except humans. He's saying worry isn't natural. Jesus says worry is unhelpful. What does he mean by that? It's useless. It doesn't work. Worry is worthless. It doesn't change anything when you worry. Matthew 6, verse 27, Jesus says, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Worry can't make you an inch taller. Worry can't make you an inch shorter. Can't make you bigger or smaller, thinner or fatter. Worry doesn't work. He says, who of you can change anything? He said, you can't add even a single hour to your life. Worry about any problem in your life will never move you one step toward that situation. Worry is worthless. Worry cannot change anything in your past. It's already done. Your past is past. So why are you worried about it? Worry cannot control your future. No matter how much you think you can, you're not controlling it by worrying about it. So if it can't change the past and it can't control the future, what does it do? Messes up today. And he says, there's no need to worry because your heavenly father will take care of you. You know, when I was a kid, um, if I had any need in my life, I didn't worry about it. I just went to my dad. I said, dad, I need this or mom, I need this. And if I needed money for, to buy something, I'd say, Dad, I need some money to, to buy this. I never once worried about where he was going to get the money. That was his worry. <laughs> You're worrying about a lot of things that are God's responsibility. Worry is assuming responsibility that God never intended for you to have. Every time you worry, it's a warning light. I'm playing God. I'm acting like God. I'm, I'm a... a thinking that it all depends on me, that I don't have a heavenly father. So you never worry if you understand that God is your heavenly father and you understand the goodness, the goodness of God. Matthew 6 verse 30 says this, if God cares so wonderfully, even for the flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, in other words, they're only going to bloom for a few days and then they're gone, but your life lasts decades. If God cares so wonderfully even for the flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he surely care for you? You see, what he's saying here is that God has assumed responsibility for the needs in your life. And he cares for you because he says you are valuable. You have value. You want to know how much you value? Look at the cross. Jesus died for you on the cross. That shows how much value you have to God. You're not junk. You're not worthless. No, no, you are valuable to God because you're his child. 
Like the shepherd takes care of the defenseless sheep. When you need it, I'm there. What am I saying? I'm saying that worry in your life, every time you worry, it comes from the fact that you misunderstand the goodness of God. Worry is a warning sign. It's a yellow caution light going, bam, bam, bam. That's saying, at this point, I've forgotten how good God is. I've forgotten the promises of God. I've forgotten what God has promised to do in my life to meet all my needs. He says it over and over and over. I will meet all your needs. There's no need that God will not meet if you trust him. Now, if you don't trust him, you're out there on your own. But if you trust him, he says, I will meet every need in your life. And worry means I've forgotten that, the goodness of God. It comes from misunderstanding what God is really like. And you know what? We always get into trouble every time, whenever we start doubting God's goodness. When we start thinking, God's not going to take care of me. God doesn't really love me. God isn't a good God. Every time you start thinking like that, and you know where those thoughts came from, um, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to go down a blind alley, hit a dead end, have all kinds of discouragement in your life. And it doesn't even make sense. Most of you here sitting here this, uh, in this day are, are believers. You've stepped across the line spiritually. You've said, you know, I've put my trust in Jesus Christ because I know heaven's perfect and I'm not. There's no chance I'm getting to heaven on my own goodness because I'm not good enough. So I'm trusting Jesus Christ to forgive me and to save me by his grace. Not by my works, but I'm just trusting God to save me because he's, he loves me. He wants to forgive me. He sent Jesus to die for me. When Jesus died on the cross for you, he solved your biggest problem. You don't have any bigger problem than eternal salvation. But if that's your biggest problem, why do you doubt his taking care of the smaller things in your life? What's the logic of saying, I'm going to trust God to get me to heaven, but I'm not going to trust him to help me make my car payment? What, what's the logic in that? It makes no sense. Why would you trust God with something so big, eternal salvation, but not trust him with, who am I supposed to marry? Or am I ever going to get married? Or am I going to get a job? Or what school should I go to? And all the other major questions in life. Why don't you trust him with those things too? It doesn't make sense to say, oh, I, I don't doubt him for my salvation, but I do doubt that he's going to care for my health. I do doubt that he's going to care for my career. It doesn't make sense at all. If God can be trusted for salvation, he'll carry everything else. And when you doubt that, you are an unbeliever at that moment. You're an unbeliever. Every time you worry, you act like an unbeliever. You see, it's actually an insult to God every time you worry. You're acting like an orphan every time you worry. You're acting like you don't have a heavenly father who has promised over and over again, over 3,000 promises in this book, to take care of your needs. How many times do you act like God doesn't know what you need? And we start depending on ourselves and we start taking matters into our own hands and we assume that we have to figure it all out rather than just trusting. That's called playing God. When we get to heaven, you're going to see how many times you set yourself up for failure by worrying instead of trusting. John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus says this, Don't be worried. What do I do instead of worrying? He says, believe in God and believe in me. Now, how do you do that? How do you trust God to meet your needs? Number one, and you do this every day. It's not a one-time thing. Every day, ask him to be my shepherd. Every day, I ask Jesus to be my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You do this Every morning, when you get up, you sit on the side of your bed and you say, the Lord is my shepherd. And then I say it throughout the day. Uh, any, you got a major decision to make, the Lord is my shepherd. You might say it 10 or 15 times a day. But if you'll start saying that phrase, your worry will go down. Every time you start to worry, you need to say, the Lord is my shepherd. Now in John chapter 10, Jesus says this, verse 14, 15. I am the good shepherd. When you say the Lord's my shepherd, who is that? Jesus says, I'm it, I'm him. I am the Lord, I am the good shepherd. And I know my own sheep, and they know me, 
and I lay down my life for my sheep. That's what he did on the cross. He gave his life for you. Second, it's very important, I give him, Jesus, first place in every area of my life. This is extremely important, that I give Jesus first place in every area of my life. Now the Bible says this, Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33. Your heavenly Father already knows perfectly well what you need. Now let me stop right there. Your heavenly Father perfectly knows already what you need. So any need you mention to God, he already knows. So anytime you come to God with needs, he's not going to go, whoa, I never saw that one coming. He knew it before he made you. But he says, I already know what you need uh, before you even ask. And he says, and he will, not might, he will give you what you need if, here's the condition, if you give him first place in your life and you live as he wants you to. So you give God first place in every area of your life. Now let me just tell you something. Anytime you worry, that is a warning light that that particular area of your life, you have not given him first place. When you make Jesus Christ number one in every single area of your life, it really simplifies your priorities and it also gives you a whole lot less to worry about. See, when it's given to God, then you don't have to worry about it. Too often we worry about things. We worry about physical possessions. Now, as long as you love anything else in your life more than God, that area is going to become a source of worry to you. Just count on it. It's going to become a source of stress and a source of insecurity if God, if you love it more than God. You're going to be victimized by worry and anxiety. And eventually, everybody has to decide, you and me and everybody else, what am I going to live for and who am I going to live for? Um, and whatever that answer is becomes your Lord. You know, one of the things we worry about the most, of course, is money. What I've discovered is that no matter how much or how little you've got of it, about it, you still worry about it. And if you don't have it, you worry about getting it. If you've got it, you worry about keeping it, saving it, spending it, investing it, protecting it. And, and God says, I don't want you worrying about that. I'll take care of all your needs. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus says this. So don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will have its own worries. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Anybody agree with that verse? Can't change the future, can't change the past, just work on today. There are two days of every week you should never worry about. Yesterday and tomorrow. Because you can't do anything about them. Take one day at a time through your life. Now why? Why does God say that you should only live your life one day at a time? Well, because it's true, it's the only thing you can do. You can't live in the past. You can't live in the future. You can only live today. But there's a couple reasons why you should only live one day at a time. First, when you worry about tomorrow's problems, you miss all the blessings of today. Some of you are so worried about retirement, you're not enjoying today. It's okay to plan for tomorrow. It's okay to plan for the future. Just don't worry about the future. Planning is good. Worrying is bad. You can plan for tomorrow, but you can't live in tomorrow. You can only live today. Now I know that the future can often seem, you know, very overwhelming. Uh, but God graciously divided it up into 24 hour segments. So you don't get all the future at once. You get it 24 hours at a time. And if God gave you all the future at one time, it would overwhelm you. But you're not there yet. You're not ready for it. So it's not going to come at you all at once. You're going to hit the future one day at a time. You can handle that. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd.